Hi and welcome to the Fiber Arc. Today I'm going to show you how to make a felted painting. Um, we recently launched some new kits that are 2D and I thought it would be nice to show a few of the techniques and run through a few of the tools and supplies that the kit comes with. So in every kit comes a block of high density foam. Um, it's deep enough that when you poke into it, you won't hit anything with your needle. Um, we also supply a sheet of felt canvas to work on. Um, this is what you basically paint onto and the wool grabs onto it. Um, this particular design is just something I've come up with. It isn't uh, a particular kit, um, at the moment anyways. Um, and But we do sell all the supplies and all of the um, techniques that you'll see will be relevant to the kits. So what I'm going to start by doing is um, taking some green wool and I'm just going to establish a horizon line. So I'm just going to lay that on and when you are painting with wool you want to use just a thin layer. Um, it should be thick enough that you can't see through it too much but it shouldn't be really, really thick, because if it is thick, it's harder to frame up. Um, it's not a huge issue if you were just leaving it unframed or in a hoop, um, but if you are trying to put it in a frame, it's going to be easier to find a frame for, for one that's slightly thinner. So you can just bend the wool however you want. It doesn't have to be um, you know, a straight horizon line. You don't have to get too caught up in in, in how you do it, you can just lay it on and it's very forgiving. You can move it afterwards. And then I'm going to take some of my horizon line. Just above that I'm going to put some light white and this is actually a soy blend. Um, so it has soy fiber and wool fiber. And so that's the yellow part that you're going to see on it. And then underneath, for my hills, I'm going to put some green. And these are just wool locks. These are actually just dyed locks. Um, we do sell different colors of, of wool that, in different ways. I mean, the, the wool top that's in the kit is actually just washed, combed cordial. And these are hand-dyed locks. So this is more like like it would be if it came off of the sheep but then washed and dyed rather than combed and carded. So you want to just basically establish a layer of wool over the entire area just so that you got it all covered. And you can blend fibers together So if you've got two shades of green, you can just put one on top of the other and then pull them through your, your hands. So you're just going to take it and just going to blend them together. You mix those up. That creates lovely organic texture and color pattern. And you just lay that, lay that on where you would like. It's not too challenging. And you just, um, you can follow the pattern or you can change it as you like it. It's your painting. <laughs> and I have some lovely accent colors. So you can add some like pinks in there. And I'm going to make this a bit more of an evening sunset, so I'll put some deeper yellow just down the bottom. And I'll put more fluffy white towards the sky. I might add a little bit of blue up there as well. Just a 
hint of blue. And then I have some other fibers, like this is mint fiber that I've dyed. Um, and this is just, I've dyed it green. Um, it's fun to experiment with all, all these different fibers because they do felt quite differently. But they add a really nice shimmery kind of effect, which I like. And I have some rose here. That's also an interesting one to use. And I'll put that over top here. This kind of looks like misty sort of valley thing going on. And then I will add a few. I have these silk nebs as well, and those are pretty to use in the foreground of some floral kind of notes. And I'm going to put some more white in the sky as well. Just so it's, you can kind of see it's a little bit see-through still. And you want to make sure that that's nice and covered. So I'll just pop that underneath. Just like that. Just a little bit of this light yellow color. So it's good to have lots of colors while you're you're painting with wool because then you know that way it just brings it to life a lot more. Um, it's nice to have a, a good palette to work from. Perfect. And in the foreground here, I wanted to do, I wanted to try doing a few sheep in the front here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it and any of your fiber, if you feel like, you know, this is way too long, you just take it and you just break it with your fingers. You can also cut it with a pair of scissors, but you can break small pieces of fiber off and use those. And sometimes that's just easier to work with. A lot of times I'll talk about smoothing the fiber and basically I just you can fold it like so and put it on or um, you know if there's delicate parts that you want to do um, that require a bit more fine detail you can roll the fiber between your fingers so if I was putting legs on this sheep for instance you can just smooth that between your fingers and just roll it and organize those fibers a little bit more. So this has basically started the felting process. That way you can felt it. And it, it's already, you know, started the process there. And then again, it would need a little back leg. <laughs> and so I'll put that one on there too. little face. And what I'm going to do on top of this white body that I've made, um, I will put I will put locks of hair too on it. Um, I'll probably add the ears as detail afterwards. Just because it's easier to do it like that. I like these curly locks I'll put on the sheet, but you can also put them in the sky too as just it just adds texture. Um, we have boo bamboo in our, our kits that work really nicely for that as well. Um, and you're just laying them thinly out and putting them on. Perfect. Um, for anything like, I know in some of our 2D scenes, we have trees. I'll see if I can find some brown. With trees, what it's nice to do is take the fiber and then take a portion of it and pull it so that the strands stick out and so they have little fluffy tops. And then just splay those tops out. 
roll them between your fingers and this makes like the tree trunk type thing and then you would put that wherever you would like a tree and then you can easily just add foliage on top as you'd like I'll take a few different browns. A lot of the time it's just layering the colors. Let's make a little hedge. So when you're ready to felt, you're going to take your felting needle. Uh, let me see. And you're just going to hold it and poke the fibers down. To begin with, you just want to poke all over just to get this base layer all in. I like to put my hand over the work um, just to press it slightly. And you're just going to poke up and down. The little needle has barbs on it. You only need to poke a little ways in because the barbs are just on this last little section of the needle. So you're just poking all those fibers in, getting them to grab and push through. And basically you just keep poking this until it's nice and smooth. And you can always add more. So if you find you know, you're just going to put this layer on and then you can always just you think, oh, I'd like a few more of those decorative locks on, you can just put more on. And you'd like to keep the needle quite straight um, when you're poking. It's good to go up and down. Um, some people like to felt with a felting tool, and that's cool too. Um, I generally just use one, but you can also just hold two together and poke that way if you need to go a little quicker. you're just going to keep poking. You can start to see all the shapes are coming together. And if you decide you don't want something somewhere, you can easily still just tease it out a little bit and pull it off. Move it along. It's very forgiving. And if you find you're having big holes in your work, so when you're poking it, it's leaving really, really big holes, and you're thinking, oh, you know, those look a bit big, you can actually just poke very gently around those holes, and that just smooths it out. If you just do little gentle pokes, generally it's just because the needle's going in a long way, um, or the wool is still in its sort of semi-felted state, and uh, if you just keep poking it a little bit longer, it smooths it right out there. You're just going to keep poking this.
And I might add a few green locks to those trees. And I'll just blend those together a little. Not sure if you can really see those branches on there. some more. I like to add a few splashes of color in the foreground. I can add a few hints of different colors. And I have some natural locks here too. I can add for some texture. green in the foreground. And so you see, you just keep adding bits of fiber, um, just like if you were painting. And what's nice about the kits is that you have a step-by-step -step guide that you can follow along. So you know where you're going to put all of your colors, but you can always, you know, customize it however you like. I might add another sheep in there. It's nice to have two or more <laughs> with sheep. Once you start, you tend to end up with with more of them. She like them so much. <laughs> I'll have one that's looking at you this way. I think. And we'll do them slightly smaller as they get into the distance, so that you have that feel of perspective and and depth. So I'll put this one back here. And again, I'll use some of my natural locks to just put over their bodies 